Hi everyone, this is Omega Amanita channel. This is my first tag video. This is called the Coffee House Dex tag. It's created by Admits the Gray, so I'll leave that link in the description. So I'm excited about this because I love to like think about if if a deck was this, then you know what deck would correspond to that. Like I like correspondences essentially. I'm trying to think of the best way to describe that, but yeah. Um anyway, let's get into the tag. The espresso shot. A deck that's strong, punchy, and gets straight to the point. So for that one. I chose the um, John Dodal Tarot de Marseille because, I mean, this deck just does get straight to the point. It's like a playing card deck, so I find it's like cleaned up, so it's really straight to the point. It's like there's no messy lines or like anything in the deck, so it just tells you it's really good for any sort of prediction reading, so that's why I chose this for the espresso shot because it's like, okay, you get in there and you just, it tells you, like, there's no if ands, and buts about it, there's nothing else, you know, it's just a card with some simple imagery. Uh, it's a pip deck, so as long as you know your numerology, it's just gonna tell you straight up. So that's why I chose that, because it just straight up tells you. Simple as it gets. And that's simple, accessible, and gets the job done. So um, also leave a comment please. I love like hearing what, what do you guys think too. Uh, a deck that's simple, accessible, and gets the job done. So for the drip, I chose the apparition tarot. And I chose the Apparition Tarot because it, the imagery is so simple that it speaks very clear. And for this I only did Tarot because um, I just felt like that simplifies things a lot. I have a lot of Oracle. But this deck is very simple. If you know Rider Waite Smith, it's almost like simplified imagery of Rider Waite Smith. And it's just, it doesn't have much on the card, but it speaks very loud and clear. So, yeah. Uh, it has like innuendos in it and all that, and metaphor. So, that's why I chose this deck because I feel like if you know Rider Waite Smith, it's just a really, it's an easy one, like, you know, attract abundance. It's just, like, it just says it. So yeah, it definitely gets the job done very smoothly, in a smooth manner. This one is the pour over, and for the pour over, I chose the Dark Goddess, so this is a deck that you need to take your time with, but it's totally worth the effort. So the reason why for me personally this is a deck that I can have to take my time with is because I might not know all the goddesses in the deck, and even if I do, I still like to read the guidebook. Like if you know the goddess, you can pull things from there, if you know, um, if you know like the, the standard meaning of a writer at Smith, yeah, you can go from there if you just read numerolo numerology or have your own system. But I like to take my time with the deck, so it's, it's, I don't particularly have a deck that takes so long, it's only if I want it to take long, really, in, in general. So, you know, I know about these goddesses, like I know who Dumavati is, um, but I might want to read the guidebook, I might want to hear what she says, and I might want to... I might not even go off the fact that it's the card that it is, I might go off of something else, so... So yeah, that's why I chose this deck. 
It's a... Uh, it takes long because I want it to take long. Which I feel like is... It's why you would drink a pour over anyway. Like, you want it to take long, so it's worth the effort. So, deck number four. This is the Cafe Latte. I chose Tarot de Saint Croix because everyone likes this deck. I, people choose to have me read with this deck. Like, when I have decks as a choice to sit sitting out, anyone likes this deck. I just, and I do feel like it's right or it's myth. It's simple. Um, if you know Ryder and Smith, you can read the deck. So, and the imagery is, it's not harsh. Um, it's like, it's like Ryder and Smith, but more friendly, I guess. Like, and it does have a real journey and spiritual and embodied feel. Like, you can really feel the creator's experience through the cards. And, it's just really good whether the reading is mundane or spiritual or relationships. It can really do anything and I find that everyone likes it and all varieties of people like you can't hate on the deck is kinda of what I'm what I'm trying to say. That's kinda of what lattes are like. Well received, highly palatable. If you were gonna buy it. Also, I know this um, deck is out of print. This version is out of print with the borders, but I think that the borderless edition is still available. But I find just people really drawn in by the sunflowers or just something about this deck. It's just like, people like it. The cappuccino. A deck that's classic, sophisticated, maybe a bit fussy. I didn't have an exact match for this one, but. I chose the Botan Tarot, and I chose the Botan Tarot because it is, um, it's like the cards are really nice and it comes with like a, a really nice guidebook and everything, but it's, it's only, and it's okay, it's sophisticated because the art is so nice and sophisticated because the card stock is so nice that's why I'm saying it's like it's got like one of these and and all that and it's just it's all done really nice and it has the guidebook it's got like stories and mythology that it's based off of but it's only fussy because you know sometimes I just don't know the association of the cards so it's kind of like the dark goddess one but like if there was a story about it in the thing like i might have to be like i have to read the guidebook i don't know who this is type of thing but like but then it's so beautiful and i just but it's got stories behind it and you gotta remember the stories when you read this deck and that's the only reason why i'm saying it's fussy it's because it's just beautiful but you gotta be in the know about it to to read with it to its highest potential. So the next deck, this is the mocha. Um, this is my favorite category, even though I've never drank a mocha, but I'd like that flavor if I was gonna drink a coffee. Uh, this is a deck that's rich, indulgent, and a bit extra, and the only reason I chose this, the, the Sheck version of the Shadowscapes is because it was extra for me, and, um, like, I, you know, I don't speak the language, but these cards are larger, and they're gilded, so that's why it's extra. It's, like, indulgent that to wait that long, and for the deck, so it's experience around it and then the fact that um I don't really know what that that says but like I know the card I know what it is and I've memorized at this point like that is fire and everything but it's only it's only extra and indulgent because I don't speak the language and I wanted the gold gilded larger cards so it's extra compared to like the normal version, 
in the shadowscapes. So yeah, this is my mocha deck. Just so beautiful. And then I was like, it has to be, I gotta get the most beautiful version of it. I need the large card so I can see the, how beautiful the artwork is. And so that's why it's, I'm considering it extra. So for the next deck, this is the Cortado, a deck that's balanced and objective. I chose the Midnight City Tarot just because the imagery on the cards, it's, you know, it's a lot of black and void and the people on the cards just, they, they don't have like an extreme personality or gender or there's just no extremes to the deck. And that's just, that's why I chose this, because it, it doesn't impose anything on you. I feel you can really fill things in. Because I've never even been to New York personally, too, so maybe that's why I feel like I can really make things up. Because I'm not, I, I don't live in a city, and so for me, I can really make things up. And with the void um, people, like, you know, there's so many, so many things without it being too much like this is how you have to read the card because the image is so specific, like it's not, so. And I also, I've never drank the Cortado. So that's kind of the funny thing. And I chose the Midnight City and I've never even been to New York. Espresso con penna. I've never had. The, I've never had a lot of these drinks. I just like the tag. Okay. Um, this is a deck that puts you in your place, but with a hint of sweetness. And this uh, deck literally even has like imagery with um, cupcakes and stuff too. It's a whole thing. It's got like all the stuff. So I chose this deck. So if you've seen Jasmine deck, it grew up effects. I mean, of course, that is so sweet looking, but it isn't as sweet as it looks. Like, it tells you things, but it's like looking cute. But the stuff doesn't fool around with you when it speaks. The way that it speaks doesn't mess around. Cute. And also the cards are like a purple gilding. So that's why I chose that deck. These beautiful creatures. Because they're beautiful, but they are creatures. So this is the Chai Latte. Chai Latte. A deck that's warm, cozy, and nurturing. Chose Animal Wisdom Tarot. I think it's called Spirit Animals Tarot. But I chose this deck because these animals, they're just, it's really sweet. Um, the, there's no violent imagery in the deck, and I have it gilded with, um, I gilded it pink. So, this is always a deck I can trust is going to be nice to me. <laughs> so, if I'm, like, looking for that, if I'm looking for a deck that's going to be nice, I definitely go for this one. It's sweet and cute and they're animals, like even that, it's like as violent as it gets in the stack, like, it's just reliable, like it's gonna be nice to you when you need it, and these animals are just so sweet, innocent, and cute. This is my matcha latte deck, which, I, which I've chosen. So this is a deck that's an acquired taste, or a bit unconventional. I chose Tarot the Sheep, just because I know what people say about this deck. And this is one of my favorite decks. But that's funny that the devil's on the bottom too. Like this is a deck that like, some people just taboo, like at least don't like it. So this is like, I don't know, a perfect card to show you like some people like this. And I've gilded it like a gold purple red thing going on. So with this one, I just know that some people really don't like their eyes in this deck. And just 
it really pulls some people like, eh, this is weird. But I really like it. The She, um, the Other Worlds, Celtic, so. It's just some people just don't like it. Some people just don't like it. And you can see why, of course, I understand. But I love the, the art and the, the way it speaks. And I also love matcha lattes, so that's actually what I would order. Next up is the hot chocolate deck, and this is the Nicoletta Tarot. This is a deck that speaks to a younger version of yourself. So I really like it because it speaks to a version of me right now, honestly. Have a deck that's like only this version of myself, like all versions all the time. I don't know. I, I like to have a mood for all the things. So it, I like that Alice in Wonderland vibe. Um, I like that fantasy. Uh, it's like sweet. It's like eerie, and it's very lonely feeling in a way too. It's kind of isolated and like imaginative. And so it does remind me of myself when I was younger. It's very comforting to me, to other people I know it's spooky, but no, that's 